Today, we're going to talk about probability. Probability is important because it is the fundamental of the definition of the p-value. We're going to start with something very boring, and then we're going to show you the dumbest example that you've ever seen. Probability is important because when we learn the definition of a p-value, the first word is going to be the probability. We're going to go over this again and again. You will memorize this whether you want to or not. The probability of observing a test statistic. This might sound like gibberish now. A test statistic of a given magnitude or larger if the null hypothesis is true. And next week we'll talk about what does that mean, null hypothesis. But today we're gonna to start with this idea of probability. Probability is covered a lot in many statistics courses. If you've took one as an undergrad, you may have done examples where you have a bag which is filled with black and white ping pong balls and what's the probability of choosing the black one, two white ones in a row and so on. For statistics, you really only need to understand a few things about probability. First is that we're going to think about probability as what is the chance that something would occur in a long run of experiments? So if you did something over and over and over again, what would you get? That's how we're going to think about probability. The probability of flipping a heads on a fair coin is 50%. So the probability of an event flipping heads is always between zero and one. If it never happens, it's zero. If it always happens, it's one. Most things are somewhere in the middle. And we'll have to think about if not that event or the opposite of that event, what's the probability of that? Well, that's one minus that event. So if heads is 50%, obviously tails is also 50%. So we're gonna use these basic little facts and we're gonna build up to this idea of p-values. Remember, a p-value is the probability of getting a test statistic of a given magnitude or larger if the null hypothesis is true. In other words, it's the probability of getting my data if nothing is going on. Statistics is backwards. You assume nothing is going on, then you go out and collect some data, and you say, what's the probability I got my data if that hypothesis was true? But we need to think about probability. All right, ready? This is the dumbest example you've ever seen. We're going to talk about the idea that a histogram, which shows the distribution of individual people that live in certain values. We know that. My son counted up the colors of M&Ms. What percent of colors fall into those different categories? That histogram we can also think of in terms of probability. And this is a bit of a mind switch a little bit, that the histogram can also tell us about things we haven't seen. And I'll, this is actually cool. I'll see if I can explain this to you. All right, as promised, here's the dumbest example you've ever seen. There's a sport called football that's played in the NFL. And I went through the roster of every single NFL team and I counted up each player and collected data on whether they are male or female. And this is a bar chart that shows you the actual distribution of this variable in this population. 100% of players in the NFL are male. 0% are female. That's at the actual data. This is what actually exists. Now, let's think of this distribution in terms of probability. So let's take a step back from your computer, grab something soft and throw it at this picture that you see right here. Try to hit one of the people in this picture. What's the probability that you would hit somebody who is male? Well, I'll hit one right now. Oh, 46, a male or a female? Well, obviously it's a male. What's the chance? A hundred percent chance. This bar chart here 
not only shows the actual distribution of this variable, but it also shows you if you were to randomly pick somebody from this population, what is the probability that they would have certain characteristics? This example is so dumb and so obvious, but it's the fundamental of everything we're going to do for thinking about p-values and the probability of seeing our own data. So this variable is binary. Let's make it a little bit richer. Let's go back to that elderly Chinese population I saw when I did my health fair as a student. Now I counted up the percentage of this population. I measured their BMI and I put them into categories, underweight, normal weight, overweight, and obese. Now I'm standing in Chinatown right now. If I opened up my window and I threw this stylus right here, and it hits somebody in the head, what's the chance that that person would be obese? Well, if I think of this chart in terms of probability, I can look right here and I can see that's about 10%. There's a 10% chance that the person I would randomly hit would be in this category. You can also look at just in terms of color. If you added up all of this red here and all of this red here and all of this red here, and all of this red here, about 10% of it is in that obese category. What's the chance if I randomly chose an elderly resident of Chinatown that they would be overweight or obese? Well, I got about 10% here, and it looks like I got about 35% here. So there's my 10, 35. There's about a 45% chance I would hit someone, choose someone, randomly select someone who falls into one of these two categories. We can think of this in terms of cumulative probability as well. As I go up this variable here, what's the chance I would hit someone underweight? It was pretty low. What's the chance I would hit someone normal weight? It's higher, and I add that together, and I get here. What's the chance I would hit someone overweight, normal weight, or underweight? I add all those up, and I get here. And then finally, I get up to this cumulative, and it's 100%. But this is BMI's categories. So we saw the stupid football example, and now here's BMI's categories. Your next question is, well, what about continuous variables? Does this work for continuous variables as well? And the answer is yes. Here is BMI as a continuous variable. Remember, these are actual people that I measured in Boston, in Chinatown. And I can ask you questions. What percent of that population has a BMI above, say, 30? Well, you can go to 30 right here, and you can look in the area that's to the right of 30, and you can count up all these percents. So here's a few percent, here's a few, here's a few, here's a few. You can count up and add all those up. Another way that you can think about it is how much red ink is to the right of that relative to the left of that. That's the actual people that are measured. But again, you can flip this and think in terms of probability. If you randomly chose somebody from Chinatown, what's the probability that they will live somewhere over here? You just look at the distribution and say, that is the percent. That's the color. That's the amount of the distribution that lies over there. And when we think about what a p-value is, the probability of observing a test statistic of a given magnitude or larger. So we might say, here's the given magnitude. Here's the or larger. And the probability is just the chance that when you randomly pull from this curve, you'll pull someone from here. 